We begin by praising Allah. We praise Him, we seek His help, and we ask for His forgiveness. And we take refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequence of our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide, and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, no one can guide. And I testify that Allah alone is worthy of worship, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant of Allah and his final messenger. I've been asked to talk today about the topic, why does God permit suffering on the earth? First of all, <clears throat> the topic the discussion presumes the the topic and the discussion presumes the existence of God. As long as we can agree that God does exist, that this universe does have a creator, then we can really move forward with our discussion. If you don't believe that there is a God, if you don't believe that this universe has a creator, <clears throat> then this talk may pass you by a little bit. Uh, and you could refer to <clears throat> the lecture, excuse me, delivered by Hamza Sotsis yesterday, uh, or you could go onto the Big Debates website where he has debated some atheists and secularists and put forward some very strong and convincing arguments through which and by which we can, uh, we can know that this universe has a creator. Briefly, the arguments are the need for a first cause who is uncaused. The second is the evidence of design and the fine-tuning of the universe leaves us with little rational option except to conclude that a designed and finely tuned universe must have a designer and that this being must be necessarily different in nature from the creation and therefore this being must be self-sufficient this being must be eternal, outside the confines of space and time. These are pretty familiar arguments. I don't intend to go into the philosophical discussion as to whether we can prove the existence of God or not through these arguments, or indeed, what does it mean to prove anything in the first place? It's sufficient to outline that there is a rational basis, a strong rational basis to justify the existence of one eternal self-sufficient being. And therefore, the question that is often posed by atheists, or the issue that is often raised by those people who claim that their belief is that there is no God. And amongst the strongest arguments they claim they have in order to support this belief is what they call the problem of evil or the existence of evil and suffering in the earth. So their argument goes pretty much like this. <clears throat> how can a good, how can a all good and all loving 
God permit and allow suffering to exist. In fact, the depth and degree of suffering that exists on the earth is so great and so severe that God or the good and loving God cannot possibly exist since it's a contradiction in terms. However, the reality is that this is not a rational argument at all. The argument is not rational, the argument is emotional. Because the evidences which certainly Muslims bring forward in order to rationalize their belief in the existence of one supreme transcendent creator are the ones that I have outlined to do with cause, the need for a cause, the design, the fine-tuning of the universe. And these are our basic presumptions, which has got nothing to do with why there is evil. We know God exists because we believe it is irrational, improbable to ascribe to a organized, systemized universe that it is a product of some random event. It is really ridiculous. A more rational explanation is that there is a creator. So, the argument about evil actually has nothing to do with whether God exists or not. It's nothing to do with it. It's an emotional argument. In fact, the only question that is begged by the existence of suffering is why does God permit that suffering? Now, it may be possible that certain religions are confronted by the issue of the problem of evil and it is a lot more problematic for them than it is for the religion of Islam. And that is partly because the way that God is defined in certain religions. <clears throat> So, for example, if you claim that God is love, if you claim that God is love, and one claims that God loves everybody and everything, and one makes such a claim about God, then the problem of evil does become much more problematic. If you have such a concept of God, and you have such an attribute that you ascribe to God, then it does become very difficult to explain why an all-loving God allows such things to happen. However, we don't have that problem in our tradition. Because there is no attribute of God as being love. God is not love. God is Al-Wadud. He is the loving and He is the most loving. And there is nothing that can be more loving than God. But He is not all loving. Because that is an absolute attribute that does not allow anything that contradicts it in any single way. <clears throat> 